Cassidy again. And I find that an actual shame, really. He was just so underrated and he was so huge. Yes, I know people like Michael Jackson were huge and George Michael. There's so many of those people too, but people tend to forget that David had one of the biggest fan clubs in the the entire planet in the early 70s, bigger than the Beatles and Elvis Presley too. People tend to forget this and we all need to be reminded. You know, even his RCA albums that he did, there would be a lot of songs from both, at least his first two albums, The High They Climb, as well as Home Is Where The Heart Is. We know that was more music that was recorded back then, which has never, ever seen the light of day. And of course, we know getting it in the street and everything that he did after that too, even late 70s, he did as you know, Japan released a best of, and we were all surprised because we all thought it was a, an actual best of, but it wasn't really a best of. It was unreleased music by David Cassidy. So where's all that stuff? Did you like the content of, of that Japanese release? Because it was a different style. It was a very different style of music, David. But you know what? The voice was still there. Mm. The voice was still there. The only thing is that With the cover, they used just an old Partridge family picture from 1970, which I thought was a bit ridiculous, to be honest with you. It should have been a mid-70s photo of David because that's when he would have recorded all that music. So I don't know why they did what they did because it wasn't really a best of. And I don't know why they used an old picture from 1970 from the Partridge family. It should have been a mid-70s photo. Mm -hmm. And, of course, we know that was also released in the States, on CD, but they only used nine tracks from that and they included the original I Think I Love You. So they didn't get the full 13 tracks that that the Japanese market did. Mm. And that's the only cool thing about Japan. Japan releases a lot of amazing CDs, you know. They recreated David's catalogue, Dreams of Nothing More Than Wishes and Cassidy Live and The High They Climb and um, Home Is Where The Heart Is and Getting It In The Street on the cardboard sleeve. They did such an outstanding job on on those. And um, today I would say they're worth an absolute fortune. You can't really buy those anymore. I'm sure I've seen the original Dreams Japanese CD close to $300, I think I saw it. Wow. And I'm I'm not surprised, you know, because the Japanese um, are really good when it comes to releasing CDs of any artist. They basically release a certain amount, and that's it. It becomes collectible literally straight away. And they're all a very good price, actually. But once they go, they go. You can't find them again. And in years to come, these CDs are going to be worth an absolute fortune. A lot of the Partridge Family CDs are starting to go now anyway. There's literally only three CDs available at the moment. I believe that's Sound Magazine, Shopping Bag, and Christmas Card. After that, there's literally nothing left. Bulletin Board, Crossword Puzzle, Notebook... They're worth a fortune today. Even if you go on Marketplace, you go on eBay, they sell well over $100. I, I remember when David passed away, Bulletin Board was worth in the vicinity of close to $350, US dollars, which was astounding to me. I, I do believe that Sony needs to reissue a lot of this catalogue again from the very beginning. And not only that, add extra bonus tracks, add the unreleased songs, add a lot of the different versions of each song. And that also includes David's catalogue. We all know for a fact David recorded so much more in his early days, Bell Recordings. I had even heard his dreams are nothing more than wishes. It was close to 50 tracks that he recorded at that time in Hawaii. Now, who has that? I don't know. I can't even tell you whether Sony even has that. That could be sitting in someone's garage in Hawaii somewhere just sitting there, which would be a real shame considering the music he recorded back then, you know. As a long-time fan, I want these out, and I feel that he deserves this more than anyone else in this entire planet. He really does deserve to have his music out. I'd like to be able to walk into a music store and, and find a box set, not only on the Partridge family, but one on David Cassidy too. I agree with you entirely because I, I believe we need an extensive and exhaustive compilation of his solo work presented in anything up to say a 27 disc box set. Yeah, I agree. Vast, Absolutely. Yeah, his vast music archive can be explored to produce this priceless collector's item that includes individual book style volumes. I agree. So Absolutely agree with you. So yeah. we would have previously unreleased 
studio demos, rough cuts, previously unissued live recordings, because the yes. live album should have been a double, as we know. Yes. The demos that he recorded, remixes, outtakes, alternate versions, and what this would give his fans, music collectors who appreciate good, good music, the yes. opportunity to own the evolution of David Cassidy and witness his yes. part in the musical revolutions o over the decades. Because he was more than just the Cherish album, he was. Baby, Baby, Dreams he and was. Nothing More Than Wishes. There was far more substance to him than anyone was. perhaps ever gave him credit for. On the planet, yeah, I agree with you. And, that, and that's a shame to me. And this is why his legacy is very important. It needs to come out. It needs to come out. We need to have like a separate box set for the Partridge family, a separate box set for David Cassidy. That's how it should be. They were working on things like that in the 90s. I don't know what happened. It never saw it never saw the light of day, unfortunately. But we need to make it happen now. I think it's a shame that after David died, basically we got nothing. And I don't understand that at all. Basically, each artist who has passed away, from Tom Petty to Michael Jackson to George Michael, Literally a week later, they've all gotten their CDs reissued again. And not only that, they've come out on vinyl. We've had nothing for David Cassidy. Not one thing just to say, you know what? This artist has passed away. Let's remember him. Let's. I'm actually surprised, Louise, why they never re uh, released his original 1974 Greatest Hits, which was kind of like David Cassidy slash Partridge Family, but it had the most beautiful cover of David from not like, late 71, early 72, and um, it was such a beautiful cover. And I thought, had they released that in the UK when David died, that would have gone straight to number one. That just goes without saying. That would have gone straight to number one. And they should have released that CD the world over, just to say David Cassidy is gone and this is his greatest hits. But nothing was done. And um, I'm going to be honest with you, Louise, I'm actually pretty angry about that, that just nothing was done. It's as though David just never existed, you know. But And we know there's other artists out there who've l literally done three albums in the 70s, yet today they have box sets out, they have um, literally everything out. And I can't understand someone as famous as David literally has nothing out, which um, I'm so pleased that Cherry Red picked up his four solo albums and they did a lovely box set, which I feel as though that was more for the UK market than the rest of the world. But I was really still pleased the fact that they um, included two B-side tracks, which have never, ever been on CD before. So that was a win-win, a to be honest with you. Mm. Um, and I'm glad they've put those on there. But there's more to those songs than just the box set we got. So there's just so much stuff out there. And David has said it countless of times. There's over 200 songs in the vaults at Sony. And there would be. Absolutely no question about that. So I feel as though it's time for Sony to open up their vaults and release all these things for the fans because this is what fans have always wanted. And I'm a little tired of hearing that there's just not enough interest out there because that's just total crap to me, I'm sorry to say. There's still interest. There's still a lot of fans all over the world that would warrant this music to come out, in my opinion, including a vintage concert too. Plus, there's a whole new generation who are discovering David and his music. They are. They are. Absolutely, Louise. And I think that would be such a shame for when we go that he's not around anymore. I want people to, to listen to this music and think, wow, David Cassidy must have been massive. And of course he was. We know that. But we want young kids to understand what he was all about, you know.